Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our refactoring of our code base. Again, trying to build a nice little game framework here. And that involves today working with the Mesh 3D class here. So we want to go ahead and make sure that we clean up our abstraction. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, and if you haven't seen the previous lessons, visit courses.msha.io here and uh, make sure that you're following along. You can do that on YouTube or in a distraction-free environment like this website here. So anyways, uh, enough with that. Let's go ahead and check out our main.cpp here. Again, this is our structure here uh, for our project here. Uh, and let's go ahead and see what we've done here. So let's go ahead and do a brief recap of the code base. Again, if you're not as familiar here. Um, and what we've done here in our main here is we now have this mesh class, which is setting up our geometry. So again, thinking about our graphics pipeline, which we should probably always have uh, with us here. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, rendering pipeline here, right? That's the vertex specification spot. So if you've been following along in this uh, series here, right, that's what's on your CPU, setting up your buffers and so on uh, when we're creating our mesh here, okay? And then eventually you get into the shaders and so on here. Um, but anyways, that's what's going on here. We're giving a sort of default uh, transform location just to move our meshes somewhere. Uh, and uh, and I've done those one behind the other. I've done that on purpose because we've still yet to talk about the depth test um, once we you know finish some of our uh, refactorings here. Uh, and then we create our graphics pipeline. And once we've had a graphics pipeline set up, then we can set up our meshes. Um, now, you might be wondering, we could actually create our mesh and set up the pipeline in one step here. So we could start reorganizing these um, steps if we want. Maybe we'll do that later. Uh, if you've chosen to do that, that's likely what we'll want to do. Maybe set up all of our uh, or compile all of our graphics pipelines um, at runtime before our program starts and then uh, associate a pipeline with our mesh. But again, right now, this is a two stage process. Every function has one job. Some people like that uh, sort of software methodology, uh, so that's reasonable. Uh, and then anyways, we get into our main loop. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Uh, and basically what we're doing here is, um, well, just drawing our mesh in a loop here. Of course, we're handling input and stuff like that for moving around keys, but that's our uh, basic idea here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, you know, right now we don't have any updates for our mesh here, but let's go ahead and have our draw calls labeled there appropriately. Uh, we're just drawing one mesh after the other here. Okay, that's the basic idea here. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that mesh uh, 3D class here uh, and start thinking about what to do here. And today I want to go ahead and clean up, um, continue cleaning up some of the mesh uh, 3D class here. And we've got to think a little bit more about this transform uh, struct that I've been talking about here. Um, and we almost got to it, uh, but last lesson I started doing this fine uniform location because I needed to do a little bit of uh, cleanup here um, in our mesh draw function here. So if we go down here, our mesh draw uh, was looking pretty messy here. Let's go ahead and uh, you know, get everything uh, together here uh, where we have all of our uniforms being set up here. Um, now there are still some things here that I want to take care of basically like how to deal with this perspective camera that we keep creating <laughs> for mesh, right? This this should probably just like in our camera um, uh, belong there. So I think it's it's finally time to you know get rid of that <laughs> and just make this a two stepper here. Uh, so we want to be able to do something uh, pretty similar here, where this is just a uh, let's go ahead and just do like g app m camera dot get uh, projection matrix. Again, I'm calling it projection because we don't know if it's going to be perspective or not, uh, but that's the basic idea here. Um, so let's go ahead and just take care of that uh, once and for all. Um, <laughs> and then let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do I have projection? Now, I guess I was just passing in perspective here, uh, but I call it U projection in the shader, so that's reasonable enough here. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do a, uh, let's open up in a new tab actually in our source, our camera CPP um, and similar, just like we have a get view matrix. Let's create a camera get, uh, oh, I guess we don't have it per projection matrix. There we go. Be a const function. Um, and we could have something like this here. Let's see here. Now, I guess this is something that we'll have to think a little bit about here. Um, let's also split this window here to have our camera. 
Um, and let's see here. Now our view matrix we were creating from the uh, I, I plus the direction in the up vector here. Um, so I could just in our camera store a projection matrix here. Um, let's think about that here. And when I construct my camera, maybe I want to actually construct it with a default projection matrix. That's something that I could do. Um, let's think about that here. Um, again, it's, it's kind of hiding a detail and maybe we want to actually change this. Uh, but really all I want to do here is let's go ahead and just copy this. Uh, well, that's just going to be a matrix four here. Let's, let's have as part of the private here, GLM mat four, um, M projection matrix. And the reason that I'm thinking about this, why we might want to do this in our constructor here is because I do need some way to communicate when I'm figuring out for the window, the aspect ratio. So, you know, with, uh, by height here, uh, if I want to just be able to do that, or if my window size changes, how I want to be able to handle that. Um, so I could just leave myself a little to do note here if I want, <laughs> but, um, let's, let's think about that here anyways. Um, so anyways, um, we will have the function that returns a matrix four here called get projection matrix would be a const function. So I'm happy with that. Uh, and that function should just basically just return whatever this projection matrix is. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a simple one. Just return and projection matrix. And then the question is, where do I set it here? Well, again, I can do it. I guess I have some defaults here. Uh, you know, assume, but let, let's put a little to do note here. Assume we want this projection matrix. Um, and then I do need to pass in like the aspect ratio and so on. Um, let's see where I'm creating my camera. I think I'm just creating it an app here, which is going to call or create by default that, uh, matrix here. Let, let's actually, let's make it a two-step, uh, process here. Uh, let's, let's write a function called, uh, create projection matrix. Uh, and we want to actually pass in the uh, values here. So we got to look up whatever GLM perspective is. Um, or, or even let's just, here, let's just do better. Set projection matrix. Because uh, that's likely what we're going to want to do here, right? To, to be able to reset these values here. Uh, yeah, I don't like having it in the constructor. This constructor is great for default, but I don't want hidden algorithms and that sort of stuff in here. Uh, so let's, let's get rid of this. Yeah, anytime you're adding little to do messages, which is fine, right? This isn't going to be a huge project, but, um, it is, uh, you know, getting to be a big enough, uh, or interesting enough project. I want to show some, uh, good abstractions here. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and just set this up here. Um, and the best thing to do is going to be to look at the GLM perspective matrix, which, Hey, look at that. Um, one of my uh, videos is there, so check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but let's get to the help page. <laughs> uh, perspective. Yeah, when you search for the help and it's your page, uh, what do you do if you need more help beyond that? <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, so let's see here. Here are our fields here. Let's see if we have better types here. These types are going to be like float. Uh, I think these are all floats here for us, and it's going to return a matrix four by four. Now the T is just the sort of type here, like if it's a float or whatever. Um, let's see if they give any examples. I guess they don't give any examples here. It's a highly templated library. That's one of the tricky things with GLM. <laughs> that's, you know, if, if you don't like reading C++ code, uh, that's not going to be fun here. Uh, here, let's paste that in here just so I can keep an eye on. We want a float for the field of view, float for the aspect, float for the near, and a float for the far. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's copy that over here. Let's do the same thing. Uh, let's see here. And this is not going to be a const function. Okay. Uh, now the other thing that I'm a little bit, um, I like my functions to show up in the same order that they are in the header file. So let me make sure I've done that here. 
Um, again, we could come up with some uh, heuristic, uh, but that's that's good enough here. Okay, let's make sure this is compiling. Uh, let me go back here. There we go. Uh, ah, yeah, of course, G app and all that stuff isn't here. Uh, but let me hold on to this for a second here because I'm going to want that uh, function here. Uh, okay, so we're going to do our M projection matrix. Uh, that's this guy here, this member function um, of our camera class here. Oops. Let's see here. M projection matrix equals. Uh, and why was this looking weird here? It's not tapped over. There we go. Uh, GLM perspective, and then it's going to be a simple call to FOVY aspect near far. Okay, that's it. It's just going to set that. Okay, so that's the simple function here. Um, okay, so let me open up in a tab just so you can see in one view here, right? Uh, these are some functions for setting our projection matrix. Uh, so we've added one, one little step here. Uh, I guess in our class. And again, maybe I'll come back and I'll refactor out, right? So we've been doing our mesh 3D in a very C style API. Maybe I'll do the same for the camera. We'll see here. Uh, you know, that's just how we sort of landed on things. Uh, but anyways, that's what uh, this guy looks like. So let me go ahead and close that one out here. And then just so you can see the function here. Yeah, this is just setting uh, values here. Okay, so again, should compile without any problems. That's good. Um, and now let's go ahead and uh, go back to our main file and probably in our main here after we after we initialize our program uh, set up our camera okay uh, and I want to do the g app dot m camera uh, set projection matrix uh, oops here let's see here Oh, I lost my uh, perspective camera here. Oh, let's undo there. This is the one I want. Go back here. I just don't want to lose that function. Yeah, let's see here in this file. There we go. Okay, that's all I need from it. Um, okay, I just want to be able to have these values. So after we initialize our app, we'll have things like the screen width and so on. Uh, so then this just becomes uh, our G app M camera. And then we're able to call set projection matrix on it and pass in these values here. Okay. And let's kind of indent it uh, in a reasonable way. Uh, I don't know. The jury's sort of out on, on what the best way to do this is, but uh, you get some of these long parameters. Uh, actually, the right thing to probably do is here uh, create an a, uh, a variable or something. <laughs> and just toss it in here for that. Uh, I'll just leave it as is. That's okay. Uh, so anyways, let's compile that, see if we did anything silly. Uh, not yet, uh, which is good news. And now we can go to our mesh uh, draw function. And let's see here. Uh, we just have perspective. Uh, here it is. And we should just be able to retrieve our location of our projection matrix okay and again I'm being specific because you might want orthogonal or whatever domain you're working in so that's no problem there uh, we should be able to retrieve the projection matrix here in perspective and uh, pop that in here okay so no problem with that here okay so let's go ahead and give that a run well I say no problem until we run this let's go ahead and see if it does the same thing uh, as it used to uh, and if I go ahead and bring in our window here Okay, I've got my two uh, quads here. All right, so a nice little refactoring there. Again, steadily improving our code. Uh, one lesson here at a time here. So, with that said, less room for error, less you know weird stuff happening, and we've again abstracted things a little bit here. Now, again, you know if, if you want, um, again we might have a way to ask. Again, you can sort of abstract this however you want. Again, we can get rid of this sort of. Uh, C++ uh, abstraction if you don't want the object-oriented stuff or if you're following along these series in a different language here uh, and have the camera be sort of a C-styled API where maybe we have a way to call a function that G app returns the camera and then from our camera we have a, 
uh, function called set projection matrix, which takes a camera as the first parameter, uh, retrieving that camera from G app, and then you know getting the projection matrix. So again, you can do these things in a C style way uh, if you like or, or choose that. Um, so again, maybe we'll refactor that out here. Um, but I'm happy with this. I'm happy with where we're going here. Uh, again, um, our functions are looking cleaner and cleaner here. Uh, but there are still a few little things here that we got to deal with. Uh, so our transformations are still being handled in draw. So that's still too much here. Uh, and again, this was fine when we were just drawing our regular quad, uh, but this is too much work for draw, right? And we want to be able to have control over like translating, rotating, and scaling our mesh. Uh, so that's where we're going to be heading in our next lesson here. Okay. So stay tuned for that, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed that lesson, and we'll continue adding on. Uh, and refactoring here just a little bit. And then again, as I mentioned, we'll dive into more like introductory graphic stuff here once we have some meshes and stuff that we can play around with. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Hopefully you enjoyed that lesson. Hopefully you're enjoying a lot of live coding here. I'll look forward to your discussions below and I'll see you in the next one.